All right, I've got a Gege, Geig. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. But anyway, there it is. It's an AP3000. And what is interesting about it is this key. The holes in it. Uh, so you've got one, two, three, four, five pins, normal pins, and it's got this interesting bit of key control. There's like a little rotor in there, which once I manage to pick it open and cut it, I'll be able to show, but there you go, works fine. Um, there's zero impact on picking, purely uh, key control, I'm guessing. I'm going to use, it's got a reasonably bad keyway there. I'm going to use bottom of the keyway down here. Tensioning that direction. Uh, I've got a couple of low lock picks. I got a scimitar and a um, gem. So one pin one is a really high set. All right, I think we've got pin one set. Two. Four. Yep. I think we just set everything. Pin one really does lift. There we go. That's better. A long way up there. Pin two, a bit more of a medium lift. Switch back to the scimitar to get those little back pins that are quite low. Come on. Let's see if we can. It's got tricky pins in here. All right, a little false set, and there we go. I touch on two and we are open. A little bit tricky, not ridiculous, but tricky. Um, so let's get the vice out of the way, slide our pinning tray over. Uh, we've got this clip on the back. So let's see if we can. We'll lock it up first, eh? Come on. There we go. Oop. Jumper caught it. Clip off. Put that aside. Get our key out. Shim. Doesn't really need a shim, but always a good idea to use a shim just in case. You know, if you accidentally make a gap, I mean, I say this almost every time, but like always use a shim. You accidentally make a little gap in there and a pin falls in the middle and suddenly you've made a mess. Put a shim in. It really doesn't matter if you do that. Everything still is fine. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five pins. 
two drill protection rods there. If we take the key out, you can see that bidding. See how far down that front one goes? It really needs to lift up. And then, just keep my thumb over that. If you look on the bottom, got this extra little plate here. So we'll get to that in a second. I'll just dump these pins out. One drill protection rods. They're not very exciting. Uh, there's some more in the Bible. Three, four, and five. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Um, let's just roll upside down. Two, three, four, five. So all, you know, some more boring standard key pins. Get the drivers out, show you those, and then I'll show you the cool rider. So we've got this nice serrated pin on one. Two, it's like a serrated T pin. Three, it is a standard, uh, looks like a steel pin. Actually, I own a magnet on a stick now. Yes, steel. See, these brass, not magnetic, tells you it's an anti drill pin. Or is another of these nice serrated pins. And we'll just get five from the back. Five is also a steel drill pin. Um, so there's our top chamber. You can see right at the front there, two extra uh, anti-drill rods that sit in the front here. So it's pretty well drill hard, and I assume these standards are on the quite long ones, uh, long key pins. So I'm assuming those are somewhat randomly positioned. Um, it doesn't really make sense to have one right at the back, for example, uh, you, you'd want them up the front. But yeah, if they're random, then like, they just are where they are, which is fine. All right, so there's that. Now, we'll get you a post up of these pins soon, but let's switch to my other. So you got this little ball bearing here, which I'm assuming is also for drill protection. And there's this little cap that is, that comes out, but it's quite annoying to put back in again. Um, yep, that just covers it over. And then you can see there's this little rotor, which spins around, and that just comes out. So it sits in there. So then when the key is inserted, can see it allows it to go in. So if you had a key without the holes, you would get to about here and it would just jam. You wouldn't be able to insert it any further than there. If you had the wrong amount of holes or the spacing wasn't quite right, it wouldn't work. So it just makes a bit of extra difficulty. Of course, you could just cut a giant channel in the key along here and it would still work because it doesn't actually need to spin to do anything. But nonetheless, that's a pretty cool little mechanism. Um, so just take that out and stick it down there. Um, and then keyway shot, there you go. So you can pick off this ledge here or off this ledge here, here, here really are the best spots. Um, and then a tension down the bottom gives you the most room to move. Um, all right, close up of our pins. Uh, so we've got these really quite nice uh, chunky serrated pins. This one here is like the same, but it's a T-pin at each end, and that's the one where we've got that false set and then just touched out of that. Standard pin, standard pin, another of these nice serrated pins. Um, all springs are the same. Somewhat balanced pin stacks. Oh, well, it's actually pretty well balanced. Just looking at that, that one's... Yeah. It's not bad at all. There you go. So that is a GG, Geki, Giga, I don't know, the AP3000 um, with its cool holes in it and rotor. Not super difficult, but pretty cool. Nice to have in the collection.